Hi, hello, welcome. My name is Shelly and today it's my October wrap up. So I read a total of seven books in October, which is slightly below average of what I usually read, but it's not the number that counts, it's the fact that I've read it all. Let's just get into the book, shall we? So I read the Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. So in this we have a princess, a traitor, a hunter and a thief. Um, we have four teenagers who have the fate of the world in their hands. Um, that's basically the short of it. So it's a historical fantasy which you very much get that whole medieval kind of vibe straight on. Um, it did take me a good while to get actually get into the book because there's so many characters and you jump between characters and places and all that and while I can enjoy it because I do once I actually get into it but it takes me a good chunk of the book to actually get into those sort of stories that's that's kind of a me problem not a other people problem. So there's a vicious fight for power and loads of people get caught in the crossfire. You really get thrown into the mist of all of it from starts. So I guess that's also why I kind of had a hard time getting into it in the first place. It was very enjoyable by the end of it and I will obviously be continuing on with the series because I, I do that whether I like the series or not. Also, I already have the books, so, you know. Um, I am very curious to see where this story is going to go, where it's going to end. Uh, it was a very slow start and sort of a slow... The pacing of it was kind of slow. Uh, so I'm hoping it will pick up in the second installment. However, the pacing was slow because we were introduced to all the characters like one by one. But yeah, if you do like historical fantasy, I do recommend you pick this up. If you have read Sally Green's previous series, the Half Bad series, uh, it's nothing like that. So whether you like that one or not, um, don't expect the same thing from this one because it's very much a completely different kind of a vibe to it. And then I also read a classic because you got to read them sometime, don't you? So I read Persuasion by Jane Austen. So eight years before this story begins, Anne was happily betrothed to a naval officer and but she breaks off that engagement because her friend tells her to, basically. And the breakup really puts Anne in a long-lasting deep regret. And then her ex-fiancé shows up and he's like this rich, successful captain. And he finds Anne's family in the brink of ruin. So that's fun. So basically, it's just tension between these characters through and through. Um, to sum it up, basically, Anne fucked up. So being a classic and being written so long ago, um, it was definitely hard for me to read. I've only ever read Pride and Prejudice before, and I quite enjoyed that one. Uh, I've read about half of Sense and Sensibility, uh, but then I stopped reading it for some reason. So I, basically I only have Pride and Prejudice to compare Jane Austen work to. Uh, so this wasn't my favourite, but it is a lot of other people's favourite. Uh, I prefer Pride and Prejudice, but at least I can say I've read this now. I mean, since we're talking classics, I also read The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And, um, I mean, what can I say? It's Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say this. This is the, I think it's the third collection of Sherlock Holmes stories, because mostly there are 
the Sherlock Holmes stories are mostly short stories uh, and I believe this is the third one that I've read and I will say this I much prefer the the cinematic versions of Sherlock Holmes especially what is it the BBC one with Benedict Cumberbatch that one is a good one but yes Sherlock Holmes we like Sherlock Holmes don't we mostly I mean he's kind of a jackass but it's interesting and then I also went into like the the thrillery type of books I guess I'm not sure uh, but I read The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins and okay so this is about best friends Nina and Josie and they've spent like high school as outsiders and now they're like se gonna be separated because they're gonna go to college in different places far away from each other so to like say goodbye I guess uh, they decide that they will take a trip into the woods they will go hiking in the woods uh, so basically two very inexperienced girls go hiking in the woods and then bad guys show up so not a lot happens in like the first hundred pages or so and saying that this book is only 221 pages long so the bad guys as it were they just sort of appear out of nowhere and you don't really get like a lot of motivation for why they are doing what they are doing uh they just sort of appear and then it ends the point of view of it it's written very it's written in that way that I hate. Basically both girls point of view is at the same time and you don't really have like a different set of when you follow the other one and it's not like you have a narrator who like tells you what's happening. No, you are literally like well I thought this and then the next person will like I thought this. So <laughs> yeah i don't like that kind of writing it's it's mostly just sloppy and confusing and it's only when the girls are separated for a very very short while that you get like two different points of views from the both both of the girls because they are literally in two different places so obviously basically this book is too short to actually give you much of anything um like i said you, you just you get a very very short introduction to who the girls are and then you get like no introduction or motivation for the bad guys and then it just ends that that's basically the book um so it left you it leaves you wanting more but at the same time you don't want more of this or at least I didn't want more of it I was quite disappointed because I quite like the Anna and the French Kiss books it's not really a trilogy it's more like companion novels um, I really like those um, so I was hoping for a bit more but at the same time I read uh, There's Someone Inside Your House uh, not too long ago and that was kind of a disappointment too although a lot of people have said they love that book which fair enough and then we have morning star by pierce brown so this is the third installment in the red rising saga uh, I don't want to say trilogy because there are a total, currently a total of five books. There is a sixth one coming out, but I do believe that after these, after this one, um, it sort of takes on from other characters. I don't know if it's, I don't know what happens. Basically, it, it follows other characters, but I believe you see more of these ones. I don't know. I don't know who, who's the lead in those. I don't want to spoil myself, so I haven't read the back of it yet. I just know that 
they're quite chunky. So, Red Rising. Uh, Red Rising follows Darrow, who is who comes from the lowest caste of humans. He, he's a red. And things happen and he sort of infiltrates the highest castes of the humans. Is that what we're saying? Uh, the golds, basically. And it just sort of takes on from there. So in the first one, Red Rising, we sort of have that Hunger Games kind of a feel because they're sort of like thrown into the wilderness and have to survive they basically kill each other but the the aim of the game there isn't like the last one standing is the winner it's more like a a teamwork kind of a thing and then we have golden sun which is the second book and that one is very more like a lot more like war games kind of a feel. Uh, there's a lot of like backstabbing and like there's a lot of what the fuck moments and I love that one. Um, this one is a lot slower but we do get more of a conclusion kind of a feel to the first three books anyway and it, it's, it's quite sweet and we do have a lot more of Severo in this one and he is hands down the best character in this series and I will fight you if you say otherwise. I won't actually but I will. Yeah, it's a great series. I do highly recommend you pick this up if you haven't already and um, let me know what you think. And then I also read The Language of Thorns, Midnight Tales and Dangerous Magic uh, by Lee Bardugo. Um, this is basically a collection of short stories, um, fables, folklore, that kind of a thing, in the realm of the Grishaverse. Grisha? Grisha. One of those. I don't feel like you need to read this book. Uh, to like conclude or get some more from the Grishaverse um, and I don't actually think you need to read any of the the Shadow and Bones or Six of Crows or anything like that to read this book however you will understand a lot more of the characters and so on from this book um, or from the stories in this book rather I mean it's not a lot to say about it other than that, it's a short story collection of very cute things. I mean, it has very pretty illustrations throughout. Um, so, I mean, that is very nice. And uh, very, very lastly, we have Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mia. Moi? Me? Moi? I don't know how to say her name, I'm sorry. I'm really not sure where to begin with this book, to be honest. Um, so, let's go with this one. Uh, on the cover, it says, Lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. And that's such a glare. It says this on the cover um, by a Charles Stross. Mr. Stross, I uh, I need to have some words with you because, uh, I mean, I knew going into the book that it's not really about lesbian necromancers in space. I did kind of go on Goodreads and on Goodreads, the author herself has said that the two main leads, meaning Gideon and Harrow, are lesbian. Nowhere in this book, I mean, I, I might have missed it, but nowhere in this book does it say that they are. You get the sort of feels and the vibes that they are, but... No. Also, um, Gideon isn't a necromancer. Harrow is, but Gideon isn't. And... Basically, the so-called lesbian necromancers are supposed to be Gideon and Harrow. You lie, Mr. Strauss. Mr. Strauss. I don't know what your name is. 
sir, you lie. I mean, there's, there's nowhere that says it's a necessity to like explain away exactly what, who, what, how, all the things that characters, I'm gonna put this book down because it's just glary. Uh, you don't actually need to have the big explanation of this character is so gay, this character is so straight, or all the other things. No, we don't need that. However, when it says on the cover that there's lesbian necromancers and you don't get that, you have been lied to. Also, the whole space thing. Yeah. <laughs> the only kind of space there is, it's that they're not on our planet, they're not on Earth, they're on somewhere, somewhere else. And they go from one house into another house. That's all the space there is. I have missed something, clearly, to make this very spacey. Also, the traveling part isn't like, the, 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 it goes over like that. So you don't actually get any feel of space. You just go from one place to another and that's the space. I don't know if it was my, like, unenthusiasm for reading the book or if it was just very sloppily written, but most of the book I couldn't follow along what the hell was going on. Yeah, so that happened. There's loads of things that aren't really explained properly. You go from like one minute standing on the edge and then to the next minute you're like having a bath. Not literally, that's not actually what happens in the book, but and you're like, how did I get from the edge to the bath? Who knows? And all of a sudden there's like a fight and you're like, what are you doing? Who knows? Good damn it. So basically things happen for no reason and you're just supposed to go go along with it apparently. Um, yeah, it just left me like confused as to what was going on. I don't consider myself stupid, but I did feel a bit stupid. <laughs> so there you go. So another thing to complain about, because apparently I have a lot of things to complain about a bit this book, it's that all the characters had so many names. And which is fine and all, because we all have like, we have a full name, we have like a given name that we go by all the time and then we have like nicknames and stuff, fine. But they kept getting introduced as these long, like, divine conqueror of the guinea pig land of Yawn. Is that a thing? No. And it was so annoying. It's one thing when the character is being announced like to a crowd of people or something, but when it's like different characters having conversation and it's like, well, this one said blah, 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 and so said the guinea pig leader of Yawn, and then the next step is like blah, 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 so said the conqueror, concubine, of Mars. I don't know. Uh, it got very annoying many many times and for me that's sort of like sloppy writing. It's like you're trying to put more words in by just adding names and putting that in and getting the word count that way. So yeah, I, I didn't like that. I feel bad saying it, but to me the book felt sort of like sloppily written and I really did not get the enjoyment that I'm meant to have gotten from it. And saying that, yes, at some point I probably will revisit this book so that I can read the next one because I kind of want to know where it ends. Yeah. That's me in a nutshell. I kind of hate myself sometimes and just need to torture myself with books that 
books and series that wasn't maybe my favorite but there you go so those were all the books i read in october um have you read any of them how was your month let me know so yeah thank you so much for watching i'll see you all next time i take care bye, -bye.